Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I've made this video today as a reaction video to brother Sheikh Omar uh, Balushi. I've got a vi video here. So, uh, brother Omar, uh, Sheikh Omar Balushi, um, uh, this video is for you. And uh, I do agree with a lot of your points. However, I might disagree with a couple of points here and there as well. Um, and uh, on the outset, I'm not an Islamic scholar. Uh, my knowledge is purely from self-study and research. So, uh, if if I do say anything wrong, please do correct me. Give me some constructive criticism. I'm always here to learn. I'm a student for life, so um, I'm open for any uh, feedback on that topic. Uh, whether it's uh, a comment on the video, or you can reach me on LinkedIn, where I'm most active, um, and uh, yeah, you can send me a message and give me some knowledge. I'm, I'm more than happy or make a video uh, either way uh, I, don't, I don't mind at all um, so this uh, reaction video is about your latest video yes you've uploaded it about five hours ago I see uh, titled standing up against Muslim leaders now from my understanding and the hadith that I have seen and uh, comments online and so on um, I, 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 I'm in understanding of that we cannot raise up against any Muslim leader, um, irrespective of the you know the, the the age that we're in and so on. Okay, uh, providing they do not uh, prevent us from uh, fulfilling our like basic five pillars of Islam. You know the religious duties like praying, fasting, zakat, going to Hajj. As long as they don't do that, um, we have to you know bear with them. You know be patient and pray. For the, you know, Allah to guide them. If we are able to, we can give them constructive criticism, um, give them feedback, advise them, uh, make recommendations, uh, speak to people that might be closer to to them. You know, give their family or their friends or their connections uh, dawa and guidance in these aspects. Um, so that's that's one that's one thing. Um, and I I don't I don't know if um, you know this whole Arab Spring thing. I I personally feel that it's actually done more harm than than good, um, in in that sense. It's, it's just got things got worse. Yes, uh, you know a lot. Unfortunately, the case it's it's a true fact. Yes, there there is no uh, decent, respectable leader at the moment ruling in any of the, the countries. Whether it's a, a non-Muslim country, a secular country, or uh, a country that claims to be representing Islam. The case is Islam does not is not being implemented anywhere on earth, and it hasn't been implemented for well over a hundred years now. Uh, and uh, the the best of the Khulafa Rashidin were obviously uh, Omar ibn Abdul Khattab and uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq and and Osman bin Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and uh, of course we had the period of, uh, like you've mentioned, uh, the monarchy that existed in Muawiyah's time. Uh, and that went a bit, uh, yeah, they went more materialistic and more worldly and, and went more into the dunya. And we're not really implementing the uh, the Khalafa upon uh, the, the the prophethood, the prophetic way of, of the Khalafa. They weren't doing that, so they went completely into the world, um, into worldly desires and so on. And there were tyrant rulers like uh, Hajjaj uh, bin Yusuf and the harms that he caused and so on. So I, I am aware of all that historic events and of course the the rise of the Khawarij and uh, the Shia of Ali and so on. So a lot of these in, in you know, sects came about and a lot of these infringements and uh, there's a lot of bad things that happened. Uh, yeah, alhamdulillah after that, uh, alhamdulillah after that uh, came uh, the, the fifth uh, rightly guided Khalifa which was Omar ibn Abdul Aziz which we can see historically that he managed to turn things around when he started to implement Islam as a holistic way of life um, from all aspects and in, within two years he eradicated poverty, he created employment to the point after two years uh, they couldn't find anyone that wanted any sort of benefit or any sort of financial aid and they needed to distribute the wealth that was in the treasury because that's part of the rule uh, and they were just distributing the zakat money to the poor in Europe. So they were donating money to to the poor and the peasants and and, 
and, and you know the non-Muslims, not even Muslims. I mean, just to anybody, actually, anyone, anyone, and everyone would just they were just giving money to them, so they were contributors to the world. Uh, and a lot of people have forgotten about that history. And, and this is just a, as a great example of this is a great leader as a, as a role model for us, a role model for anyone that's in in any position of authority, whether it's, it's a business or a father or or a president of a country or anything like that. Uh, if you do implement Islam, you you solve a lot of problems. You know, you you make life good for you, and uh, also at the same time you make your country great as well. So it it does make perfect sense. And unfortunately, uh, brother Omar, uh, unfortunately we're in a day uh, day and age right now, the day day and age of ignorance. We're in the age of ignorance right now. Um, a lot of uh, people I spoke to in my life very p close people to me they always tell me that money is, is the most important thing you know the world you know, the, you know the way you look and you know how, how much money you have that's what gives a value to you whatever so they always everything is about materialism you know what phone you own um, what car do you drive what's the brand people start to brag on these things they don't understand that this life is just a journey so a lot of the Muslims they've forgotten that they 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 leave Islam you know, as soon as they finish praying, if if that's if if they do pray, if at all, if they do pray, and the best of them, uh, uh, they then abandon Islam as soon as the prayer is over. Unfortunately, they don't understand uh, what Islam has to offer in, in economics, in politics, in the social system, in the environment, the benefit it has to the environment. Uh, they don't understand these things, so they're not aware. So they don't they don't know what they're missing out on. Just like when I went to Hajj, alhamdulillah, and I, I told some of my non-Muslim friends, Christian friends and Jewish friends and, and so on, I was telling them, oh, I went to Hajj and whatever, and uh, and how amazing an experience it was for me, and it was just like the best experience in my life. And they were thinking, oh, they, you know, there must have been you know, like a beach, I was sitting on a beach somewhere, and there's nice buildings or something, and, and I told them, there's none of that. So, you know, we have to form these, you know, like religious rituals, like, uh, you know, Abraham and Hajar, you know, come and suffer Marwa. I was explaining them all that, and they couldn't understand. It didn't didn't make sense to them how someone would enjoy going on something that's you know, it's like physically intensive in a way. You know, so you're going there to do some activity. You know, you're going to sleep on the floor. You're going to do. It's not, it's, so you're not living like uh, the luxury or the way that, that you know the people that visualize this is the way that they have a good time. You know, they they go to. A nice country and there's all these first class uh, services and, and hotel five star hotels and stuff like that so they, they always imagine that this is this is how happiness comes about they don't understand that connection and the peace and the, the, the amazing feeling that you get um, w while you're in uh, in the house of Allah and you're in, in Mecca for example or Medina uh, so they cannot get that um, understanding of, of the of the beauty or that amazing feeling that one feels when they go on Hajj. So this is just an example. Likewise, unfortunately, a lot of the leaders today, they are misguided. That's 100%. I agree with you on that. There is no Islam implemented anywhere in the world at the moment. But the, in the same note, they are not educated. They haven't been educated. I mean, what, what they teach in university is completely different. They're, they're, they're teaching you a system which is based on riba for example in economics they teach you uh, this is a way to, to make money you know you, you put money in a bank and what stuff and it's completely haram so the whole concept of saving and earning interest uh, investing in bonds fixed incomes there's no such thing in islam it's har completely haram um, uh, mo taking out a mortgage is completely haram uh, buying this uh, they call it in arabic mustaladat um, certificates or you know all that stuff uh, this is all completely haram in Islam but unfortunately a lot of the people a lot of people are Muslims they're not aware of this they think it's perfectly halal it's a way to buy a house you have to take out a mortgage if you want to buy a car you have to take it a loan and that's the only way and that is completely false this is what the shaitan wants them to believe and this is unfortunately they fall into that trap but if they have that firm faith in their heart and this is I'm not talking about leaders now I'm just talking about us the, the normal people the normal Muslims in the community if they have that firm faith that the risk is fixed and 
that fi that risk is not going to change. So if it's written for you to earn in your whole life 10 million pounds, for example, uh, then you will get that 10 million pounds before you you know you you take you leave this world. Whether you get it from haram or halal, it's not going to increase you by one cent, one penny. If you start selling alcohol, or you start getting participating in some sort of haram activity, or the bank pays you some interest or you buy a house with a mortgage and the rest of the money you invest in the stock market and, and double your, your, your capital, whatever, you're not going to increase it. Once you actually believe and you're 100% convinced that Allah's risk for you is fixed, then you will strive to get it through halal means. And if you do get it through halal means, you'll get also barakah for it, you'll get a reward for it. It will be a form of ibadah for you. So you will get the, the barakah, blessings in this world, you'll get happiness, and also it will be a reward for you in the Akhirah. Unfortunately, a lot of us, we are engaged in haram stuff. So we try to chase money, we chase the dunya. Uh, we do any, I say anything to, to compete for, 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 with one another for worldly gains. And they have no share in Akhirah. Unless Allah, of course, guides whom He wills. And, uh, and you know, he, Allah is the one, not for our action, but by the mercy of Allah, He can forgive whoever He understands each one. But we should strive, of course. Like you said, also you know that the Khalafa is an obligation. It's, yes, I totally agree with that at that point. That's hundred percent correct. And also, Dawah is an obligation on every single Muslim. So every single Muslim should be active in one form of Dawah or another. They should be constantly thinking and concerned about all of humankind. You know, concerned about the whole world and what's going on. If you're feeling the pain of other people, you know, family, friends, uh, you know, some brothers and sisters that are being persecuted in uh, Palestine or China, you should feel that, you know, because if you don't, you know, Prophet Muhammad said, you're not part of our ummah. So it's important that we feel for one another and we are one uh, unit. So if one brother is being attacked, all everyone should be united and support that brother. It shouldn't be to say, no, that's, that's none of my business. I, I just walk away. And uh, we're, we're not cowards. We know that Allah's on our side. And we should not be fearing anyone except Allah alone. And even if the, the numbers, we're outnumbered. And we're facing an army who is far superior technologically and in numbers. We have something that's far greater. And that's Allah. Allah is the real superpower. Allah is a superpower but unfortunately we as Muslims as just normal Muslims not even people in power yet and including the leaders as well we are too afraid of the creation and we're not afraid of the creator we've forgotten that unfortunately we have forgotten that we should be fearing the creator we should love Allah also we fear Allah more than we fear jinns or we fear other creations, well, including humans and, and animals. And so. so unfortunately a lot of us, we're scared of these things and therefore uh, they don't step, step out of line. Yeah? But regarding the point of standing up against leaders, um, I feel it's not uh, the right thing to do. Uh, I see that there's more harm being done uh, when, when uh, you know, people stood up and they created this uprising in the Arab, the, the Arab Spring or whatever. It caused more harm than good. And uh, with regards to the point, also you kind of touched on right at the end, we we're talking about paper money. So the money, the whole concept of paper as money, that's not the issue. The issue, uh, which I know what you meant, what is, is the fiat currency. Fiat currency uh, or, and the creation of fiat currency is the biggest scam since the history of the world. It's a Ponzi scheme. And uh, it's a way to enslave the whole of mankind by the top 1% or let's just call them the matrix by a group of families uh, that unfortunately are controlling the world right now and therefore on the dollar bill they have he is pleased with our project who's pleased with our project the Dajjal and uh, they're setting up the Dajjal system and they've succeeded at it and they've managed to uh, indoctrinate and enslave the whole of mankind except of course Allah has protected some people like yourself uh, you're aware of this a lot of other few brothers and sisters are aware of this uh, even some non-muslims are aware 
of this scam uh, and any leader that tried to stand up to them in, in the past I mean you had Thomas Jefferson he managed to succeed and shut them down but that was like long long time ago and then uh, Andrew Jackson uh, JFK was uh, one of the last president, yes, the last president that stood up against that and tried to put a stop to this corruption. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, he got assassinated, as you're aware. Uh, so yeah, and then Gaddafi also tried, but he wasn't doing it for just he wanted to bring revive Islam or implement. You know, maybe I don't know what his intention was, what's in his heart, but he did uh, was was kind of like going in the right track when he started to talk about creating. Uh, a gold-based currency or a currency based uh, or backed by gold or backed by any sort of commodity when he started talking about this stuff he was on the right track on that and that was the that was worse for them than any form of uh, uh, attack you know attacking their economic system because like the saying goes you know give me control of the economy and I, I care not who uh, you know controls who, who who's in who, the politics I don't care who controls uh, who's is in in charge of a country? Who rules? If, you, if you've got control of the economy, you control everything. You control the, the politics. You control the education system, the s uh, social system. You control, uh, the, the, you know, medical system. You know, the medicine and health system. Um, so yeah, uh, fortunately they control everything. They control WH. So they've set it up. They've set up the UN. Uh, they set up NATO. They set up the IMF. They set up the World Bank. They set up the Fed Reserve. Uh, yeah, the set up the Zionist movement. So yeah, definitely, it's one big uh, network they've set up uh, like a spider's web. But all this is very weak. In sight of Allah, Allah is the most powerful. He's the real superpower, and he can change things just like that once we are ready. So I think we should really be focusing on getting educated ourselves, educating the people around us. If we can, give advice to the leaders by all means just like Musa alayhi salam he went to Pharaoh and he gave him da'wah he called him to to abandon his way and to you know uh, make that declaration of la ilaha illallah uh, and you know there is no one worthy of worship except Allah to worship the true God um, and he told him that so yes definitely we should be doing that saying if we have if got the means to do it if you've got the connections to do it or you know someone who's connected to someone who might be related to a, a leader or a president or a minister or anyone in, in the government yet yeah, by all means it's an obligation to do it and you'll be asked about it in the day of judgment what what do you do what dawah did you do you know you had this opportunity uh, to uh, to advise a brother uh, and all that stuff so yeah do it but do it in, in a peaceful means not in a in a violence means I'm against the form of violence okay sometimes you've got to fight yeah so sometimes you've got to fight and you've got to do it but that's not the time for it especially someone that you know says that he's a Muslim anyone that says la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah he's a Muslim he might be a weak Muslim he might be an ignorant Muslim but he's still a Muslim and we should uh, speak to him uh, with, with kindness and with softness and and, and try to uh, you know convey the message the correct message that Islam is a complete way of life it has beautiful solutions uh, for you know if you implement it it's actually going to improve the way of life for everyone so it's going to improve the way of life of uh, you know the citizens of a country uh, it's going to lift them out of poverty it's going to eradicate inflation if you start implementing Islam starting with uh, the money system if you go back to uh, whether it's a gold based currency you know backed by gold or any sort of uh, asset class uh, that could be you can have has some sort of intrinsic value and yeah you create a currency based on that real money halal money um, then yes definitely that that will be the beginning and then you can start implementing the other aspects uh, that come as a solution and the best example is Omar Ibn Abdul Aziz who uh, I might have mentioned already has already resolved a lot of these issues uh, in, the, in the past on, until he got poisoned by the people because there's always, there's always going to be evil people among us people that uh, desire this world and they're trying to build their paradise on this earth which is temporary it doesn't make sense you're, you know, you're, like, you're taking a, a train journey from two, two, between two cities basically and while you're on the train you're trying to you know 
establish yourself on <laughs> and it's only a short journey and, and that's it so you should be you're on the journey you should take you know the very minimum with you on that journey and prepare for the destination not trying to establish yourself on the train because once you reach the station you're going to have to get off the train so you can't be building your house and your <laughs> your paradise on the train um, and you know splashing out uh, you should be thinking about all the activities you're doing here yes you have to survive here you have to make money you have to make a living you have to work you have to earn a living all that stuff it's, and get educated but at the same time you should be always thinking whatever activity that I do here it has to be a badda because that's what that's the purpose Allah created us for Allah created us to worship him he created the the jinn and the ins for no other reason but to worship him and not just worship as just praying 24 hours a day or fasting 24 hours a day uh, but you also any form of activity that we do we do it for the sake of Allah it's a form of worship so we educate, we educate we're educating ourselves we're learning we're studying we're working to, to, to make an, a, a halal living a halal income that's also can be a form of ibadah um, we are spending our time donating our time uh, to help others uh, sharing knowledge with others that's a form of ibadah making a YouTube video as well is a form of ibadah it's, it could be a baraka obviously if people out there they just some brothers and sisters that make uh, you know like silly prank videos you know uh, they're not it's not a form of ibadah you know just making practical jokes and you know scaring someone making a, a prank on someone that's not ibadah yeah, they might get views, they make an income, but don't expect to uh, share in the akhirah for that. You know, I'm sorry to disappoint you. That's not ibadah. And at the end of the day, even whatever we do, we don't know if Allah's going to accept it or not. We hope that, inshallah, we do our best to always um, do it with sincere intentions. But Allah knows what's in people's hearts. If people are doing something as a show to show off, some sort of react or are they doing it sincerely for the sake of Allah and they're inside it, they want when they're doing this video or they're giving some education they're doing it and they're expecting the reward from none other than Allah the Creator not from someone not for someone to, to give them even a good word or thank you or or for someone to say oh wow this brother is is knowledgeable or righteous or so we should be very humble and we should always maintain the humble uh, thing and we should always speak to people in kindness and not cause any sort of division as well that's another thing we should avoid completely dividing the ummah we should be trying to unite everyone so unite under Islam and we are making an agreement that the best example is the Prophet Muhammad and his companions you know Omar Abu Bakr Sadiq uh, Osman bin Affan Ali uh, Omar Ibn Abdul Aziz as well um, and other rightly guided companions um, so yeah we should use them as examples of course and we should agree to that and and then the rest we can resolve between us you know what was what's your opinion we should discuss we have shura people we all complete each other someone might have studied a bit more in the legal system someone might have studied a bit more in the economic system and we should just consult each other to find out which is the best way forward according to the Quran and the example of the implementation like I said from the Prophet Muhammad and that's the recommendation that I would give to absolutely everybody because I try to do it myself I'm not perfect but I always try to to the best of my ability I always before I start anything I always try to see if uh, this particular uh, I you know area or field is covered in the Quran if it's covered in in a hadith in whether I want to do some sort of a business or trade you know if this kind of particular trade or this activity has been already mentioned and and what's the correct way to do it and I try to follow it to the best of my ability uh, so then you know I can always be on the right side of things of course when no one's perfect uh, but we all make mistakes and we always you know maybe I might take the information the wrong way so some you know I always uh, advise people to to give me advice as well because I might I might read something and I might interpret it in my own way uh, it, to to be implemented in a certain way and I could be wrong so I, I completely encourage people 
to tell me if if there's something I'm doing wrong or I've said anything wrong so at least I can correct my understanding and learn like I said I'm always a student so I'm always learning from everybody and uh, finally I, I don't want to keep this video too long but I I want to say that I do appreciate a lot of the material that you're you're bringing out. I watch your your videos. I've subscribed to your channel uh, a while back now, and uh, yeah, definitely I enjoy watching what you're what you're saying. Um, and some some of the some of the points uh, you might be correct. Uh, Allah Allah knows best what's right or what's wrong. I don't know, um, but I'm just giving my understanding. I'm only sharing with you my understanding I'm sharing what I've understood from my own research uh, and it's just entirely my opinion but Allah knows what's right who's right and who's wrong um, or even you know both of us might be wrong at the same time you know there might be a different alternative meaning to these ahadiths or different understanding and uh, I hope Allah guides us all I hope inshallah uh, he guides the leaders opens their heart to Islam true Islam uh, because Islam is very beautiful and the more I look into this uh, you know although I, you know, I've looked into Islam for a long time now yeah, um, but the more I look into it, it it only increases my love to Allah more it makes me love Allah more and sometimes I I think to myself you know whatever happens to me I accept it you know if Allah accepts me amongst those who go to Jannah and can forgive me for any mistakes I've done in my life alhamdulillah but Allah is my creator he could do whatever he wills with me and I completely accept it and I deserve what comes to me but it's only by the mercy of Allah that I'm I, that's what I'm clutching on the mercy of Allah Allah to have mercy on me not from my actions because no matter what I do no, even if I was to pray from right now for the rest of my life just 24 hours just praying donate all my money uh, you know fast every single day it will not be enough not even a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percent to the blessings that Allah has given me uh, just the simple things like that it, it just I can never I can never do anything enough to thank Allah for what he's given me and it, not even just the eyesight even just the understanding even um, the hardship that I've gone through in my life I've gone through a bit of hardship in my life uh, I had a lot of challenges along the way but even that has made me who I am now and made me understand things even my exposure to Freemasonry when I was at a younger age and, and what they're doing and what they're up to it's actually opened my eyes and made me understand exactly how this world is, is being run I didn't join the Freemasons I rejected it uh, straight at uh, well, the point when I understood that they are working to a particular agenda which goes against the Sharia of Islam and they are working towards the establishment of the Dajjal and they are waiting for that uh, Antichrist um, so they, they are aware of all these things and a lot of them are aware especially at the high degree level uh, they are aware of Allah they know about this but they've declared war on Allah and unfortunately there are Muslims that are involved in, in these organizations and uh, uh, a lot of them, uh, just to let you know, a lot of them are actually involved in a lot of these organizations that claim to be working towards um, Islam or representing Islam. So a lot of the, all these organizations unfortunately have been infiltrated and uh, we're all being played at the moment so we have to be very careful and, and not to associate yourself to a particular uh, group you know uh, and say oh well, I am part of this uh, brotherhood or I'm part of this or I'm part of that this is completely wrong we should just unite under Islam and and that's it we should keep it pure and that can never be infiltrated they cannot infiltrate to the point where they infiltrate the Quran and infiltrate the sayings of the Prophet they, they, they're trying but they will never be able to change the Quran because Allah protected that Quran that's a promise from Allah but unfortunately they can infiltrate uh, other organizations and we should be careful of that so uh, that's all I have to say on that point uh, inshallah and I would like to say Barakallah Feek and thank you very much for what you're doing Jazakallah Kulli Khair and may all your effort and work and the videos you're making is a, a form of 
ibadah for you or see and, and make a reward for you and raise you in ranks in Jannah insha'Allah for you and all those who are actually doing a dawah and carrying out that obligation of of dawah and uh, inviting people to 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 right, righteousness not just uh, not just giving dawah to non-muslims but also guiding other muslims to uh, a better way of life al-islam okay jazakallah khair assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh